most folks know me um, for using almost exclusively diamond machines. I usually use my Easy Cab or a 8 inch Cab King. But I do have a big time love for silicon carbide hardened soft wheels. I would love to use a 80 grit hard wheel for you folks, then perhaps start on like a 60 or an 80 silicon carbide belt, move on down the line, 120, 220, 400, 600, and 1000. But I don't have any of my 80 grit hard wheels here for silicon carbide. I will be starting with a 360 grit hard wheel and then jumping to a more aggressive 220 grit silicon carbide wheel. That's kind of not true. 220 silicon carbide is perhaps not necessarily more aggressive. There is a difference between the same grits um, when it comes to diamond and silicon carbide. A diamond 220 grit wheel will leave a different finish than a silicon carbide 220 grit wheel. It's kind of good to know that when you're using both. A 1000 grit silicon carbide wheel can sometimes look more like a 3000 grit diamond wheel. I'll be using Little Blue, my little 6 inch blue lore tone that I got around the same time as my Easy Cab. Cute little machine. I got it rigged up with a very old little GM motor. Some materials, believe it or not, actually work better with silicon carbide. Ruben Medina behind the Kachina swears by using silicon carbide for nephrite and jadeite jades. When it comes to larger agates, I almost know nobody, actually, I don't know anybody that polishes large agates on diamond wheels. Companies like Highland Park and Richardson Ranch make machines like the Bull Wheel and the Richardson Ranch High Speed Grinder that use silicon carbide to polish agates. They only take it to about 600 or 1,000 and then they use cerium oxide, which then leaves a finish closer to 50,000 grit, maybe even sometimes 100,000 grit, depending on the material. Today I will be cabbing this cute little piece of agate that I got from Master Lapidary and sculptor Antonio Martinez right here in beautiful Taos, New Mexico. Antonio is an awesome artist, very, very influential for me, very inspiring. It has some of the best material I see around Taos. I'll be starting on 360, diamond, then hopping over to 220, maybe 400, and then 600, and I'll be ending on a worn out thousand. Like I said before, a lot of folks that polish agates only take them to about 600 or a thousand. I haven't seen any Diamond wheels over 1,200 personally. I hear that they exist. If anyone knows where to find any, I'd love to buy a couple. Please let me know. I'll be finishing everything up using some Fabuluster like I always do. Hopefully this encourages you to buy a silicon carbide based machine. There's a lot of work that can be done on these machines. It does take a little bit longer for me, depending on the material. Sometimes, with really tough stuff, I'll find myself switching out um, soft wheels at 200 grit or a rougher mesh, sometimes two or three times before I really get my pre-polish going. That's because silicon carbide actually breaks down while you're working it, and the 220 grit mesh or whatever grit you're using will actually become a finer grit after you break in the wheel. This doesn't really happen with diamond. It's a little bit more consistent. The only thing that's happening to this diamond is it's getting hot and the little bits of diamond are popping off the wheel where the silicon carbide is actually breaking down. I hear beautiful stories of um, folks in Guatemala and Mexico who almost never throw these things away after they're worn in. They just consider them a finer grit. Perhaps if they really work out their 220, it'll function more like a 400 and then just put it aside. Personally, I don't throw my belts away even though I don't use them like that. I plan on resurfacing some of these with diamond one day. Anywho, I'm going to go ahead and get started. So I'm only going to work one of these pieces because it will probably take a long time to work them both here on this video. I'll be working this one. It has a cute little jersey right here.
pretty smooth sounding. Definitely a little bit quieter than my Cab King 8 inch machine. I'm using a water drip system. All right. So when you're cutting um, harder stones with silicon carbide or when you're pre-polishing with it, it's very important that you get a good dome on the stone. A lot of my pieces that I cut using diamond wheels kind of have an easier time um, polishing pieces that I didn't dome too well, where silicon carbide really, really kind of demands that dome. I won't be working the back. You should be doming all of your cabs pretty thoroughly anyway, but it's just a little bit more important when you're using silicon carbide. I do use 360 grit diamond wheel because it speeds everything up, but there's nothing wrong with silicon carbide hard wheel. I believe I got a nice little dome going on here. Almost already has a little bit of a sheen. I'm gonna go ahead and start the 220 grit process. Just like the 280 grit wheel on a six wheel diamond complete machine, the 220 or the first wheel after the hard wheel takes the longest out of any of the steps. Beautiful little piece. It might be Laguna. I'm not sure. Master Antonio Martinez uh, usually only works high-end materials. The Highland Park Bullwheel and the Richardson Ranch um, high-speed grinder actually don't use water. Uh, yeah, you use a respirator and you use very little pressure. So it's a little bit different between the two. All right, folks, now I'll be starting on the 220 grit belt. I have friends that tell me that they have hard times removing hard wheel scratches with silicon carbide belts. They'll send me pictures of their scratches and they're kind of almost burnishing the top instead of getting the scratches out. Again, that's because the silicon carbide actually breaks down on the belt into a finer mesh. I'll be using a similar technique to that of the bull wheel and the Richardson Ranch high speed grinder. I'll be applying light pressure, letting the 220 grit wheel kind of glide over the top and scratch all of those hard wheel scratches off. This will also make the wheel last a little bit longer. I have some friends that dig in real deep and it almost does nothing sometimes. It's because they're breaking down their belt. Anyway, let's get started. Friends, as you can see, this 220 grit wheel left a much glossier finish than the 360 grit diamond. Like I said, they react a little bit differently to the stones. Believe it or not, 90% of that pre-polish was actually me trying to remove a low spot here on the stone. Like I said before, it is extremely important that you dome the stone using the hard wheels before you hop on over to the pre-polishing belts. It's very tempting to dig in deep and to push into the belt with the stone. Like I said before a couple times, this will deburr the silicon carbide belt and make it a finer mesh. So you have to trust the belt, you have to trust the stone and just take your time, let the belt do all the cutting just kind of push the stone up there. It's very easy to do burr these belts. It can be done in seconds if you dig in too deep. On to the 400 grit. I'll be using a 400 grit 
used belt. This was a brand new 220 to save a little bit of time. Jumping from 360 to 220 definitely helped, but the silicon carbide hard wheels also react differently than the um, diamond hard wheels, so it wouldn't take too much longer to do that. 400 grit. Alright folks, this is 400 grit, already looking very shiny. It's almost to the point where I can no longer see the scratches with my naked eye, which usually happens around 1200 grit with diamond wheels. Awesome stuff. I could go ahead and polish this with some Fabuluster Zam or Cerium and call it a day. Totally would be shiny enough for me to sell. But I'm going to go ahead and take this to 6. I'm not going to go to 1000 like I might have said earlier. Six will be totally enough for me to polish a stone. Awesome. All right, folks, this is my 600 grit, already super shiny. I can still see the scratches with my naked eye, but they're looking great. Time for me to go ahead and polish this with some Fabuluster, and then I'll come back over here to the lore tone. And this, my friends, is after. Totally shiny. Let's get back to the lore tone and show her off. Alright folks, this is after the Fabuluster. It's looking pretty good. Definitely shiny enough to sell. I would say it's probably rocking at about 8,000 grit. If I would have taken it to 1,000, it definitely would have been a little bit shinier, but I'm totally satisfied with the results. I hope this video encouraged you folks to cut some agates using your silicon carbide machines. I absolutely love my silicon carbide machines, and even though I collect all types of diamond lapidary machines, I'll continue to collect silicon carbide machines. They are truly a pleasure. I'll probably cut this other piece of agate live on social media to promote the channel. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's really a blessing and a pleasure. If you have any questions or comments, make sure to leave them down below in the comments section. Until next time, my friends, this is Lapidary Dave. Letting you know I love you. Thanks for watching. It's truly a pleasure. See you soon.